and then you let me know when you're ready to um, put it on YouTube and I'll stream and then I'll be in the background. So if anyone, you know, in, from the audience comes or anything, I'll let you know. Cool. All right. Great. Thank you, Thanks, Jason. Welcome. You're, you're going to love us. We're, we're, this is, it's going to be a fun one. I promise. Oh, great. I'll be listening. You're in my ear. Okay. <laughs> but the question is who's in the other ear? <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> Spotify. <laughs> okay. We've got another minute before seven o'clock. The good news is that I'm looking, it looks like the first two pieces of new business are areas that may be contained within the current draft walking safety assessment report that I'm writing. So that's exciting. How's it going, Larry? You're on, oh, You're, on mute, You're on mute. You're on mute, sir. You're on mute, sir. Don't be is there. Is there any, oh, any it's other going. <laughs> Is there uh, the, any police officer there? I don't see anyone yet. Nobody yet, All right? What about um what's going on with Andy from the fire department? Yeah, we have so a... I think we do have a there's a village um phone number. So I believe that's probably a police yeah. officer. And we have LMC Media. Oh, wonderful. Hello. Hi. What officer is it, please? Nadolski. <clears throat> N-A-D-O-L-S-K-E, Shield 134. I'm sorry. Can you, can you spell it again? And like Nancy, A-D-O-L-S-K-E. S-K-E. Great. Thank you. Sure. Okay, you're ready to go. Outstanding. Let's see. Do we have a quorum, first of all? I think one, two, three, four traffic commissioners. I think you're good. Fine. We're good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for dialing in to our November meeting. Um, we, uh, we, as always, have a good packed agenda, but uh, the good news is, or at least, you know, in terms of safety, the good news is that we've only got a few items of new business. Um, and thanks to Dan Sarnoff, who's not here for me to publicly thank him, but he gave some insights into, um, you know, kind of where we are in, in the items of old business as well. So first, I guess, Jason, I'll ask, is there anyone from the community, oh, well, do we have a motion to start the meeting? I'll make that motion. Anyone else want a second? Second. Thank Who's you, second? Karen. Oh, Karen. Karen and Larry. I think simultaneously it was kind of a brain okay. mesh. <laughs> uh, I'll put Karen. Excellent. All right. Um, do we have anyone, any members of the public, Jason? We just have... Officer Nadalski and LMC Media. Okay, I see Wait, from yeah. LMC Media to all panelists, this is Matt Sullivan on a personal matter regarding 528 Rockland Avenue. Okay, okay. let's unmute Matt Sullivan, okay. Matt, can you hear us? I can, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi, Matt. Hi, Hi. sorry that my um, account here is coming up as LMC Media. I'm actually <laughs> trying to change it, but it's not letting me. Go figure. I, I, I should be able to figure it <laughs> out, you know? <laughs> you are the media guy. <laughs> um, but I, I know that I'm, I, we haven't hit our place in the agenda for 528, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew I was here. Okay, so you're here ah, with old business. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate you. Is it Alana here? I don't Alana. see Alana. No, did you all get the email? About Al Alana has resigned. She's, oh, yeah, she's resigned from the board. I'm sorry, I thought that went to everyone. Oh, no, oh. I get it. She did. I got it. Yeah. When? Um, I got it. Um, last week. week ago, two weeks ago. Oh gosh. Really? Uh huh. I didn't know that. I had no yeah. idea. Oh Lord. Oh well. Yeah. You know. So you know our um, organizational meeting is in December. So it's time to fill anyway. So we'll just. So we have two vacancies right now. Is yeah. that right, Cal? 
Yeah. And okay. I, I don't recall. Are any of you up? I am. Who's I, I? David? Larry. Larry. Oh, yes, Larry. And I hope you're going to stay. Uh, that decision is still pending. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a no. Larry, <laughs> keeping everyone on the edge of our seats. I, he's not, he's not staying. I encourage <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Larry, I hope you'll, oh, I hope you'll stay. Hey, Lucia, I thought you wanted me to stay. I said, I told you too, but you can't you. <laughs> this is reverse psychology here, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I did, so. It's all well, that's I've 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 indicated I'd like to re up as well. Um, I did see that. Thanks, Shannon. Absolutely, absolutely. And and you know, on behalf of the commission, I'd love to, you know, send Alana a nice thank you card. She's she's. Oh, been I think that'd be that'd Aww. be very nice. Yeah. That's so sweet. She's been an impassioned and and super champion for you know the voices of residents and traffic safety, and that's exactly what we need. We need she more. She really cares. Yep. Yeah. She does. Yep. He no, did. That's why I'm very, I'm surprised she resigned. Hmm. Oh, I know, I know I she has so a sad. lot going on at work. Ah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's amazing, isn't it? We, we all kind of work through these little boxes and yet somehow life is busier today than it's ever been. Yeah. Okay. So do we know what, what's going on with Andy, uh, Kelly? Maybe you can send I an don't. email. I don't, but I will. Uh, if you could check. look into it. I will. I will. Please. If you don't mind. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. We. Yeah. Uh, okay. They, they have a great perspective. Okay, with that, let's uh, dive right into our agenda. We have three items of new business, starting with the corner of Orienta Avenue and Hall Street. Uh, the resident is George, I'm going to butcher his name, Magradichian? Yes. yes, you got it. Hey, first try. Okay. That was good. <laughs> so uh, if, if folks remember, this was actually this particular intersection was part of the Orienta Old Post Road Walking Safety Assessment that we conducted last fall um, that we have a draft report out that I need to sort of re reshare with everybody to make sure that they're comfortable with it. But uh, let me first relay what George says and then, um, you know, I, I guess I'll, I'll tell you what I propose, but I, you know, want to open it up for everybody's feedback and ideas as well. Um, George is talking specifically about the corner of Orienta and Hall, which if you're familiar with that very first um, intersection on Orienta Avenue coming in off the post road, it's a, a small dead end street that if, you know, for the <laughs> residents that live on Hall, for them to cross into Harbor Island Park, um, you know, they're basically navigating the beginning of Orienta Avenue, which for locals who know it, you know, is exactly when the vehicles decide to accelerate. Um, so they turn left off the post road onto Orienta Avenue and they're so anxious to get home <laughs> that, uh, you know, they just want to kind of hit that hill running. So George asks, you know, um, we'd, we'd like a sign for pedestrian crossing um, and uh, no parking sign on hall, I'm guessing, uh, for the corner would be nice as well. Um, you know, and, and I know that in the village, we've got guide, guidance, specific guidance for how far from a corner that one is allowed to park to begin with. So, um, you know, certainly if, if there's, you know, not no parking here to corner signs on Hall Street, um, I think that's a fairly straightforward fix. Um, but one of the things that I thought we might be able to do uh, oh, and he included a picture, um, would be to incorporate this recommendation into the yet to be submitted draft report. Um, you know, I, uh, again, David, you and I live right close to this. I mean, this is, a, this is definitely a popular crossing for pedestrians, parents with strollers, cyclists, folks walking dogs, things like that. Um, you know, whether there's kind of a, you know, warning pedestrian crossing signage or, you know, some sort of, um, you know, center of the road You've situation. Oh, somebody's got mail. Oh, no. um, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, Probably Larry. Let me, let me open it up for, for my fellow commissioners, though. What do you all know about the area? What do you think? I know the area because I don't live far from it, but the no parking, how does that 
fit in with the pedestrian crossing? I don't understand. It doesn't. It oh, doesn't. Right. I, I think it, it, it may be a matter of, you know, vehicles that are parking too close to that intersection. You think that that will prevent somebody from having that issue if there's a no parking sign there? I think they're two separate no. issues. Then, no. Yeah, yeah. Because you, um, you, you study the stuff, and so you kind of know how that works. Right. Given, is it worth it to put that there and take away the parking for someone if it's not really going to become a beneficial right. um, outcome? I mean, I think... Um, Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the the village has some pretty specific guideline guidelines on how close vehicles are allowed to park, you know, to an intersection. Um, like that's a T junction, um, and I I assume anyway that you know they're they're supposed to be at least one car length back from the actual stop sign. Is that right? I, I muted myself because I have a printer going in the background. So forgive me, but. Um, I thought it was 15 feet, which I think which, sounds about right. Which is about a car length. Yeah. Yeah. yeah comfortably. Um, you know, the other thing to think about with Hall is that Hall is between, you know, we already have a crosswalk at, you know, the Montessori school at the corner of Post Road. And there's, there's another area that I know was addressed by the safety assessment, which is down where Orienta splits to Rushmore. And Hall is kind of in the middle of these yep. two, right? Yep. Um, so if you added a, a crosswalk there, you know, you'd have three crosswalks. Right. And, and, and to be fair, he's not actually asking for a, a full crosswalk. Just okay. a warning. Just a, just a, you know, center yeah. of the road pedestrian crossing sign or something like I that. I just, I looked it up. It's 30 feet, New York State DMV from a stop sign, traffic light or yield sign. Okay. God Jason? bless you, Jason. You're killing it already. First, Jason, thing. you're hired. You're I'm hired. trying to make myself useful. Quick Google search. <laughs> you're, you're really, I mean, you're the bomb. You're the bomb. Now everybody knows. Everybody on traffic knows you're the bomb. You've outed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but kidding aside, I, one of the recommendations from the Orienta slash Old Post Road walking safety assessment, if you all remember, our traffic safety consultant, Matt Carmody, was on the job that day. Um, and there was there was appetite in the neighborhood from the residents, actually, to do the fundraising if necessary to make this happen. But the, you know, to put in place some sort of a mini, I don't want to say traffic circle, but, you know, something kind of in the intersection of Orienta and Rushmore. It's an enormous intersection. Um, in particular, you know, the exit from Rushmore, you know, kind of like curves out like so, um, you know, giving, you know, tons of space. And I, I think, again, a creating that sort of, you know, visual illusion that we've got all this space and this beautiful sloping road that goes up a hill, you know, I'm trying to get home. I'm going to just go for it and accelerate to 45 miles an hour. Um, you know, just anecdotally, certainly there's, there's a good amount of pedestrian traffic that comes out of the park and either crosses straight over to Hall, which is fine and perfectly legal, or carries on up Orienta and then crosses over to Old Post Road. Um, so I, I think the, you know, the possible, you know, solution for Mr. Mergerdichian Mer is to incorporate, um, you know, this sort of pedestrian warning or pedestrian crossing signage into the draft report that we're developing. That's a good idea. Um, I had a, a couple of thoughts uh, on both sides, actually. Um, first of all, know that there is no, cro the, the only crosswalk across Orienta there is the one at the post road. Correct. So if you go up to the uh, Orienta Rushmore branch off, there's no crosswalk that crosses um, the, the Orienta there, right. which uh, I do it all the time because we walk down to the harbor. So it's, it's uh, so that there is no crosswalk there. But that being said, there is a crosswalk not very far from Hall at the Boston post road. So uh, I, I, I don't know what the exact distance is, but it isn't that far. Right. And then the other thing is that, <laughs> can you put a pedestrian crossing indication 
at uh, at a location without having a bona, a bona fide crosswalk there, uh, even that dangerous, especially for for people coming around that turn and right. um, and the other thing was. Um, Oh, I, I have a memory uh, in the past when we start talking about uh, actual crosswalks that uh, they need to have a, uh, a curb cut for uh, accessibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so there's other issues that, that come absolutely. into play if you start putting uh, crossing uh, activities there. David, let me ask you this too, if I'm not mistaken, there's no sidewalk between Hall and Old Boston Post Road, right? Not um, on that the, side of Orienta, correct. On right. The, on the, the whole sidewalk side, yes. on the other side. That would impact any action you take there too. Yeah. Because the so, only sidewalk is on the harbor side. Correct. So great, great points, great questions, both of you. I mean, the the good news is that in our Old Post Road Orienta walking safety assessment report, we did put in a recommendation for a crosswalk that would extend from Old Post across Orienta onto that sidewalk. So if you're at all familiar with the house that's right there on the corner, they do already have existing curb cuts. So we would be able to, you know, essentially take the, the painted pedestrian lane that's on the portion of Old Post Road that's on, that it's on right now and extend it around, you know, adjacent to Gillies Park and then have a crosswalk that goes across Orienta. Um, so you're, you're, you're both absolutely right. I mean, folks could, if they desperately wanted to use a crosswalk, have the choice of either going down to the post road or going up to old post road. I, I will say, being a frequent pedestrian myself, that I, I doubt many people will take advantage of that. Um, you know, if, if, I'm, if I live on Hall and I, and I want to get to the park, I'm going to cross Orienta straight from Hall. Yeah, because um, you don't have a sidewalk anyway to go up to the... To exactly, the, exactly. Yeah. Um, but one of the, the types of signs that we might consider kind of in conjunction with this larger fix of the system is, you know, just on the side of the street, a highly visible, you know, bright yellow green pedestrian crossing or frequent pedestrian crossing or something like that, um, that, you know, gives drivers warning as they're coming off the post road up Orienta, like, oh, like there's going to be, you know, folks on their feet crossing Orienta in front of me for the next few blocks. Um, so, you know, again, I throw that out there as a consideration to be incorporated into the report. Was there any reason given by uh, Mr. Mergadurchingin? Yeah, for <laughs> eliminating a parking spot? No. On wall? No. Oh. No, and I, you know, I mean, I think that's one of those I'm going to have to take a walk down there and see, you know, what no parking here to corner signs exist at all and, and whether people are using that space all the way up to the stop sign. All right. So. What do you think, fellow commissions? Should we throw this one idea. into the into Good the start. drop report? Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, what, that's on me. What did she say? Karen what said it's a good start to, to throw it into the report. Yeah, into your uh, the report that you did into the, walk the walking safety assessment report. Report. Okay. Yep. And you know, for good measure, I'll send. I'm going to call him George. Uh, a yeah. That's his name, <laughs> so that he understands that there is actually you did something a really good job with that name attempt thank you I appreciate think that you did a good job he'll correct us if, if you're wrong but oh, okay you did good just call, just call him george i gotcha he, he's okay with it <clears throat> okay anything else on this one Fantastic. Moving right along. New business item number two, West Boston Post Road. Uh, this is another traffic mirror. Um, let me just pull this up. Uh, Kelly Sousa submitted a, an incident report um, that requests putting a traffic mirror on a pole on the northbound side of Boston Post Road near Burke so that drivers pulling out of the town center and the condominium can see oncoming traffic. And I believe this is 
an identical request to one that we received perhaps from another member of that same condominium complex within the last year. Does everyone remember that? I wasn't here for that. But that okay. sounds like I, 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 re I remember a mirror, but that was on Stylus on, in, on Holstead Avenue over there. There's been a few mirrors, right? Okay, I, I, that's the only one I remember. Okay. Um, so let's see. No, that's something else. Um, unfortunately, well, there's, there's a couple of things. Boston Post Road signage, infrastructure, et cetera, requires NYSDOT intervention. Um, it's just something that we in the village don't have any jurisdiction over. Um, and, you know, secondly, I'm afraid that those nice big round mirrors are not something that are part of the manual uniform traffic control devices, the MUTCD manual. Um, they're, they're things that people put up, you know, in their private driveways or like, you know, if you've got a business and you want to make your exiting and entering customers feel more secure, you're certainly welcome to put that up. It's, it's not something that, um, you know, are you, mirrors are not something used as a regular course of action for increasing visibility or safety. Um, so I'm concerned and, and you know, afraid that with Ms. Seuss's request, there's not a whole lot we can do other than kind of explain to her why we can't just throw a mirror up there. Um, but again, this is part of the whole sort of block that we looked at in our WSA of Orienta Old Post, you know, Boston Post Road. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything that can be done. And, and I wish I had a little bit more detail from, from the resident about, you know, where specifically they are having trouble navigating onto the post road. I mean, look, we know, we know that whole area is just a congested mess, right? It's sort of like the town center, Rockland Avenue, you know, Orienta Avenue, Delancey, like all smushed together in this very small period along the post road. Um, and, and lots and lots of, you know, kind of through traffic that's going, you know, northbound and southbound. Um, is anyone familiar with, with that condominium's exit? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I know, I know from uh, voting uh, two weeks ago, yep. that out of there, <clears throat> whether you make a left or a right, it is very hard to see getting onto the Boston Post Road, especially if the cars are parked on the Boston Post Road on the left side or the right side, close, you know, very close to the uh, entrance and exit coming out of there. So it is, it is, it is difficult coming out of the town center. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I have witnessed that, you know. Same so. holds true I, for the other side of the street too, if you're trying to come out of Burke, uh, forget it. There's no visibility and, at all. And Boston, I, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would be hard pressed as a driver coming out of either the town center or that condominium complex to process any information that I was receiving from a mirror on the other side of Boston Post Road yeah. um, and, and assimilate that with what I'm seeing outside of the mirror. It's, it's just way, way too much uh, information and a mirror reverses things. I cannot imagine that, that uh, using a mirror there could actually improve yeah, I thought the same thing. Well, not only that, but when you really need the mirror in rain or fog, it just, it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Right. I was but thinking so, the same thing. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know that there are a couple of, you know, pending slash persistent issues on the post road that, you know, we're dealing with. One being the, the intersection of Fenimore and the post road where, you know, rightly so residents are concerned about pedestrian crossing there um i <laughs> boy the nest of those so, sort of four you know very very well used intersections i i tend to agree with what david lucia and larry are saying i don't know that a mirror is going to do any good yeah um, what yeah. can we do though right so um <laughs> On her traffic incident report form, you know, when we ask, would you be willing to volunteer for the village's Vision Zero Safe Streets initiative? She said no. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I'll complain about it, though. <laughs> so, 
So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I think this is one of those where, um, you know, maybe I just need to send Ms. Sousa an email, explain to her that, you know, the, the, the reasons why it's not so simple as us just throwing up mirrors along the post road wherever folks want them, but also why it may not actually be helpful to, to what she's looking for. And, and just to find out, you know, like what specifically, she, she says that she checked that it's a high risk crash location. That is true. Um, but, you know, Larry said it, I, I, I don't think that, you know, a mirror is necessarily going to reduce the risk of crash. I think that's it. Yeah. Um, and, and whether it does or not, it's not something that we have jurisdiction over. So, um, so yeah, again, I'll be happy to, to send Ms. Sousa an email and let her know. So uh, just, you, you, you'll take care of it. That's yep. all. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Lucia. No problems. <clears throat> All right, last order of new business, uh, the McDonald's drive through All right. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> That's going to be a long one. So for this, I hope you'll bear with me. I'm not ignoring you. I am going to pull up Dan's, Dan Sarnoff's uh, email response. Can I just um, ask a question first? Please, please. Kelly. Uh, isn't the drive through in the town? Kelly, can't hear you. You. Can't, hear you. You. can't hear you. We can't hear you. Unmute. Unmute. I'm trying. I'm just technical. Oh, you, you're there. You did it. I'm not oh, it's, quick. I'm it's not quick, quick at the technology. Um, I Join the rest of us. I believe it is in the village because I know Jerry has addressed this. So. Oh, right. But again, isn't this the post road, uh, which is the state? So why are we, what can we do? So I think the, actually, I think it was Dan Sarnoff who addressed it. But anyway, my understanding is that to the, the drive-through isn't actually allowed in the village anymore. But because it's a, you know, prior non boost It's grandfathered in. It's grandfathered Yeah. So to fix this problem, they would have to reconnect your their parking lot and their building footprint right and to for even agree to do that they would probably take more than months in which point their grandfather's situation would be eliminated and couldn't it's it's i don't know it's donald's it's i think i think when I when I saw come in, I thought the best we could do, and we would have to talk to George about it, right? Because he would have. But maybe we could say you can't turn left in, so that only the traffic that was turning right coming in and would back up on the post road. But at least it would try and turn left. Sitting in the, you know, does that make sense? Yes, but you're cutting in and out. Yeah, I'm there's... sorry. There's a little connectivity issue, but but I think we got the we got the, we got gist, the gist. It, yeah, yeah, we got the gist of it. Yeah, so maybe maybe no left hand turn coming, you know, coming out of it. No, coming coming down the Boston Post Road, going left, into heading the toward Larchmont, towards turning Larchmont, left. Yeah. Okay. turning left, turning left. Yeah, but again, you're dealing with the Boston Post Road, which is state. Right. right. And how would you even sign that anyway, oh. Shannon? No. It would I mean, be that's very hard. Who would see it? You know, who no. where could you put a sign yeah. anyway? You yeah, that's true. You could do that. So, if, really... if this is the state, why are we even you know, discussing it? Because we got a request to discuss it. Um, oh, and I don't, I don't mean that cynically. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. I'm only, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, well, I mean, this is a state issue that we can't really have jurisdiction over. So I guess right. we can't really make a decision. That, well, that's what I'm saying. So why we would move Dan, on you know, and Dan, leave it as a state decision? Dan right. should have just said it's a state decision and just forward, you know, email, you know, uh, pass it on to the resident. Right. right. If it's not us. Yeah. Okay. How do you want to handle it? Uh, bah, 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 bah. They lose their pre-existing nonconformity. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I actually know Mr. Katz, um, you know, who was the gentleman who sent the email. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, again, I, you know, I'm happy to relay what, what Dan sent and, and to reiterate what, you know, we'll uh, share with the other resident who wanted the mirror on Boston Post Road about why it is that we just simply have no jurisdiction. I, you know, to be fair, I'll echo what he said, you know, just from observation. Again, I, I literally live almost behind the McDonald's. Um, you know, the, the big backup is coming from the Larchmont direction in that right-hand lane, you right. know, where, where folks just literally start to stack up. And because it is such a heavily traveled road, you know, it, it creates hazardous conditions for kids who are crossing to get to school, for, you know, people who are crossing to get to the McDonald's and, and people who are just trying to travel down Boston Post Road in their vehicles. Um, but, you know, again, I, other than, you know, hoping that maybe McDonald's goes away, you know, I'm not sure there's much we can do about it. It's not happening. I know, I know people love that stuff. Um, okay, okay. Anything else on McDonald's? No. Well, with, with that gang, we are, we have cruised through new business and now we are back to some of our old business. Um, and so this is what Matt has been waiting for, um, 528 Rockland Avenue. Uh, Matt, we addressed this request last month and I'm just opening up Dan's email. I promise I'm not ignoring you guys. Um, so this was a, this, it, it, just to refresh everybody's memory, the, the request was from a resident who was concerned about, you know, safely being able to enter and exit their driveway uh, on Rockland Avenue that, you know, they were concerned that there was parking that was a little too close to the driveway for, you know, limiting their visibility. Um, Dan has put a request in for the actual crash data. We, we took a look, Larry took a look, I know. Um, you know, I, I've certainly been by the area to just make sure that there's not kind of like massive trees, shrubs, you know, a sharp turn or anything like that that, that needs to be dealt with. Um, and from what Dan is saying, he has not yet gotten the crash data on that particular leg of Rockland Avenue. Um, I, and I know that they were suffering some delays with their track system recently. So um, is there anything else though, Matt, that you wanted to bring to light since that request was submitted? Yes, thanks, Shannon. Thanks everyone for sure. your efforts here. Um, I think you know the major concern is that when you pull out of our driveway, whether you're backing up or you're going, uh, you know, face first, there is you cannot see anything on the left hand side. And people treat Rockland for whatever reason, even even when there is a stop sign right there, they treat it like the Daytona 500. Um, I can't tell you the amount of time sitting here working at home where I'm hearing horns outside, you know, several times a day. Um, these cars are speeding by and whether I have to inch out of our driveway, it doesn't matter. I still can't see them. They can't see me. My wife and I, you know, we have a newborn. Um, I just have terrible images in my head and we actually have to go out into the street if we're lucky to be in the car together. Her or I will stand in the street to stop traffic coming that way. Um, and if she's not there or if I'm not there, it's up to fate. And it's, it's a very, very dangerous situation. Um, I can certainly appreciate that, that we're looking into crash data, but I, I, I would equate this uh, similarly uh, to the times, whereas if we're, if we're wearing, not to make this, this is not a political statement, if we're not wearing masks, you know, uh, does that necessarily mean we're, we're going to get COVID? And um, <clears throat> this is a situation, it's not a matter of if, but when there's going to be an accident at our house. And I, I, I just hope that we don't have to go down that road. So you think a solution would be to eliminate a parking spot? Yes, sir. Just for visibility purposes. Just yes, for vis for visibility purposes, um, both for on you know for us and also for the oncoming drivers. But right, I, it's, only, it's only from the Waverly Avenue side then. Uh, correct. Right. So there would be if you exit our driveway, um, if you're if you're looking at Rockland from the house, if you're back to the house. Uh, the first spot that's on the left hand, left hand side of the driveway uh, just makes a huge difference if there's no truck or car parked there. 
And unfortunately, because we're sort of in that industrial zone, there tend to be big trucks that park there. Um, and it's, you, you really can't, I mean, I'd be more than happy to show anyone on the committee exactly what we're talking about. I know we had submitted some uh, photos. I don't think that it really even shows, I mean, it, it does show, you could see it in the photos, but when, you, when you're there and you could see it with your own eyes, it, it becomes very apparent. I thought we talked about um, to uh, not eliminate in a spot, but just move in that, that front spot back a little and put in a line there. Isn't that what we talked about at last month's meeting? Yeah, I, Does anybody I think, remember? yeah, no, last month, I, I, I think we, we tossed around some ideas, but I think the general consensus at the end was that we needed to go visit the, the spot, which, yeah, which you got did. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. And, yeah, and I just, your picture I've been down yep. there. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, a couple of things. I mean, Matt, first of all, thank you. Um, and really, really appreciate, you know, the, the, <clears throat> you know, engagement and interest and, um, you know, one of the things that, that we've perhaps not done as good a job as we should, and, and I'm hoping to be able to start to help change that in the next week or so, um, is to communicate the village's Vision Zero initiative. Um, so this is not to replace or supplement or duplicate what the Traffic Commission does, but essentially the village has made a pledge. The Board of Trustees adopted a resolution um, over a year ago now to, you know, reimagine the way the transportation system is designed and the way that, you know, we educate our residents, the way we engage them in, in making, you know, safe travel on our local roadways, whether you're in a car or on your feet or in a wheelchair or on a bike, um, safe for all. And, and, you know, with a, with a particular focus on the most vulnerable roadway users, those who are outside of the car. Um, because we do live in a very walkable village and we do live in a place where, God willing, outside of COVID, you know, we can get to the train into the city without ever entering a vehicle. We can walk our kids to school. We can walk to the village to go, you know, have dinner or whatever. Um, so there's no reason that you should feel terrified to leave your driveway, right? I mean, that should be a fundamental right as much as you expect to have clean water and clean air. Um, you know, so like a big part of the Vision Zero initiative is social norming um, and just sort of, you know, the more residents who are aware of and conversant in this, the more you can sort of, you know, say to your neighbor, like, you know, hey guy, like I saw you doing 50 last night, not so much, okay, I've got a kid here. Um, and that's not to put the onus on, on residents, but it's just <clears> to <throat> say that we do have a, a concerted education and outreach effort that's underway that will hopefully start to address um, some of these concerns, at least from a sort of, you know, normative perspective. Um, a lot of what, you know, happens on Rockland Ave or Prospect Ave or Fenimore or any of these things that, you know, are sort of systemic poor driving behaviors, unfortunately, are caused by the residents themselves. Um, they're caused by people who are very familiar with the roadways and know exactly what routes to take to circumvent the major arteries, right? Um, and have grown far too comfortable with, you know, exceeding the speed limit, driving aggressively on tiny, narrow local roadways. So it really does have to be a concerted, you know, combination of education and outreach, enforcement, um, you know, and, <laughs> and changes in the way that the roadway is designed. Um, I think, you know, certainly we could look at whether the, the removal of that one parking space would make a big difference for you in terms of visibility. Um, and, and, you know, again, I know Dan has put in a request for crash data just to be able to, you know, because we are a, a data-driven kind of entity. So we, we want to make sure that we're prioritizing, you know, those areas that need the help most. Um, based on what the crash data is telling us, but um, but I did want to at least give you you know some reassurance that we're not ignoring these kind of requests, and they come in every month, every month, you know, from residents who are just like, I, why are there so many cars speeding on these local roadways? Um, yeah. 
Um, Shannon, thank you. Thank you for your, for your thoughts there. Um, there, there's another concern, you know, you mentioned safe roads and, and the initiative there. Um, there's also no, uh, no walkway, no sidewalk outside the house. So a lot of times what will happen is you'll see, you know, that's the, the route that kids take from school every day. Um, they're walking out in the street. So that's, you know, just another concern another <clears throat> uh, that could be combined into this, but I think is also separate as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm very happy to meet anyone if there are any other questions. And like I said, it, it's, it's not a matter of if, but when there's going to be an accident, if no one can see at, at that driveway, I, unfortunately. And we can hear your little customer next to you. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> he Matt, says hi, everyone. Matt, can I, can <laughs> Thank I you for listening. Matt, do you mind? This is Kelly. Can I just hey, ask Kelly. a quick question? Sure. Um, do you think that other residences on your street have a similar problem? Um, not where they are, because our okay. neighbor actually has <clears throat> an advantage point next door. Um, the other person is up on, I guess it's Waverly or Harmon on the corner. Um, and the people across the street, they have a clear, a clear line of sight as well. So it's really, unfortunately, okay. just our, our home. Thank you. So Matt, I have a question. Would it, would it, I mean, if we can't take away a parking spot, if we move that front spot back a little bit, would that help you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just, you know, having, having like a car's length where, where we could at least see out. Right. Just check for cars coming. That would be a huge help. Okay. And one other thing, Matt, can you spell your last name, please? Sure. It's Sullivan, S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N. Okay, perfect, great. It's for my notes, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I need to say something. Um, my wife is currently employed by Matt Sullivan, so I won't be uh, saying anything about this or voting. Um, <laughs> thank I, you I for the recusal, of, David. <laughs> yeah, um, I spoke about the, uh, the item at the last meeting, but um, my wife, while she hadn't started her employment at that time. Um, she had had discussions about it, but I was not aware that um, Mr. Sullivan was the person who lived at 528 Rockland Avenue was bringing it up. So. Thank you for that transparency, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> David, you, that's really, that's really admirable of yep. you to catch yep. that and to, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, that's David, for, for many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, one thought, um, you know, and I know that, you know, Dan is working on getting the crash data from Rockland Nev and, and I think, you know, Larry had, had put that out there. Um, but in order to move the parking back a little bit without, dear God, putting up another sign in this village, um, you know, would it be possible, uh, I guess the question is to put some, you know, highly visible striping, you know, kind right. of adjacent to the driveway there where, you know, it's clear that this is no bueno for parking, um, you know, and, and we're not talking about an enormous swath, right, Matt? I mean, we're talking about another sort of like 12 or 15 feet that would give you that much more visibility. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Well, once you put that down, Shannon, does that make it enforceable too? Absolutely, absolutely. So yep. you have, it has to be. It's, it's MUTCD, yep, right. MUTCD compliant, you know, <laughs> kind of striping, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example in the village, you know, if, if cars park across that striped area, they can be ticketed and towed. Right. Absolutely. I, I, I would, I would, I would, uh, you know, go for that instead of taking away a full parking spot. Right. Right. Let's go a couple of feet. Okay. So. Maybe we could put that on as a, you know, question for Dan, action item for Dan to explore. Okay. And, and Shannon, sorry, is that the same length as a regular car, car spot would be? I'm just trying to envision how. I mean, from, from what it is that you're describing, you, you would like to have what, what you need to have to feel safe is sort of like a car length, right? right. In right. order to, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, a car length is nine feet. It's not a whole lot of space, but it's just enough maybe for you to be able to inch out a little bit and, and feel like you've got that buffer. Yeah, yeah, if it's, you know, just like a, a 
the size of a truck, I think, would be if that's if everyone is open. <laughs> that idea. Not a, obviously not a, a giant truck, but a pickup <laughs> truck. I think that's what Larry's chuckling about. <laughs> He's imagining a semi. Right? No, we went from a car to a truck, you know. Like. <laughs> no, thank you again for turning up, Matt. I listen. Oh no, I thank totally you. Appreciate and, it. And thank you for you know. Thank you for honestly uh, examining this and, and uh, considering this matter. I really appreciate everyone's time. We certainly try. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Okay. Uh, a few more items of old business. I'm just going to open up Dan's email because I think he pegged a bunch of them. Um, request for a stop sign at Rushmore and Stiles Avenue. Um, the you know and and listen, I'll I'll I, I should have started the the meeting with this. I know I've been promising now for the last two traffic commission meetings that, you know, Matt Carmody and I have been working on collaborating to put together a less than one hour, I promise, because you know I hate meetings that go more than an hour, um, <laughs> seminar for us, for our traffic commission, but, you know, maybe even invite the, the broader public um, <clears throat> with some sort of like traffic safety 101, right? So like, where do certain strategies and countermeasures make sense and where, do they not only not solve the problem, but maybe even cause more problems? Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't mean to sound like a negative Nelly when it comes to stop signs, but unfortunately for folks who are not in the business, they tend to believe that like throwing up stop signs everywhere is gonna slow everybody down, make everything safer. Um, and, you know, suddenly there will be no more crashes. And, and I'm afraid the opposite is actually true. So, um, you know, uh, uh, with Rushmore and Styles, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, we are necessarily looking at such a cut and dried, but, but you know, the, the outcome of that conversation last month was that we should look at the crash data. And what Dan reports is that there have been zero crashes at that intersection over the last five years. Um, I'm going to get him to stop using the word accidents, I promise. Uh, so um, the question, and, I, and I, I'm not sure because I don't have the original email from the resident or the original traffic incident report. Has anyone communicated back to that resident? Did, does anyone know? Nope. Let me check the, my notes. I don't think, and I think we were waiting for Dan. Okay. And, and he re he reported back that there's been zero crashes. So that's yeah, over that's a five so, year period. Okay, so <clears throat> stylish. Uh, Jerry told me to find out. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dan. Okay, no, that nobody, no, nobody has done anything. We were just waiting for Dan to follow up on. Um, if you want, <clears throat> I can look through all my notes. I'm sure I have something. I can contact the resident. Thank you, Lucia. That'd be wonderful. Right. Appreciate that. I'll DC you on it. Gracias, mi amor. Thanks. All right. All right, uh, next we have the walking assessment report on English Place, which, hey, I'm happy to report has certainly been sent, submitted. Uh, the, the local resident, Christy Luciano, has been terrifically perseverant at following up just about weekly. I know Jerry Barbario was looking at that early this week. He just got back from being on leave. Um, but, you know, that... That walking, sef walking safety assessment, I'd call it the, a mini assessment because it really was just this single L-shaped little intersection instead of a corridor. Um, we put on a fast track to, to get that report to the village board and to Jerry and Tom. Um, and, you know, as with the others, I kind of, kind of parsed the recommendations into potential low cost, immediate improvements and longer term things like the, you know, fixing the curb so that it would make it easier for cyclists, especially the kids, to get up onto the sidewalk and into the park. Um, 
So I think, let me just open up Dan's email. What was the follow-up on that? Oh, he said nothing. So, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the good news is that, you know, not only has the report been submitted, but I know that, you know, Jerry has been on this. Um, so should we leave it on? Does anyone have anything else? Or do we take, I think we, I, I think that's really in, in the works. Yeah. So can we can take it off, you think, or we, you, we did, you did your part, right? Good Lord. We all did our parts, you know? Oh, okay. um, and, and one thing just for the good of the order, you know, I asked Jerry because, because Miss Luciano was, was really just prodigious about following up on a, on a pretty regular basis since the physical walking assessment occurred. Um, you know, I asked Jerry like, okay, once we sort of send you the report, you know, if you can just give us, a few bullet points on, you know, what, what happens with that report? Like, and I know a lot happens with it because I know how much he and the board value those recommendations. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I'll share candidly. I asked whether I could write these reports in a more abbreviated form to speed them up. And Jerry was like, please don't. I, I, we really love like the level of observational data that you provide. We love the fact that like you parse it into low cost, long term, et cetera. Um, so they're, they're valuable. They're doing work. It's just, I think, again, part of this larger education for our community, these things take time, you know, and, and in a, an environment where the village is already strapped for cash and trying to balance what's the priority here, here, here. Um, you know, not everybody's intersection can be immediately satisfied. We have to prioritize based on greatest needs. I'll tell you also, and Lucia might be able to um, chime in on this, but you know, since COVID with people working at home and yep. someone in a, part, a department will be COVID exposed or, you know, people will have to leave the office for a few days. It's been, it's been rough. I mean, just from a personnel perspective, it's been rough. So the fact that, you know, a sign isn't put up the day after someone asks for it is, is really to be expected, yeah. right. um, particularly now. It's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard. It so, is very. Absolutely. So what, so what so, should we do with it? What do you think? I, I'm going to open it up to the rest of y'all, but I mean, I'm happy to take it off because I just feel like our work is done here. It's really in the village's hands. I'll second that. Off it goes. I, I agree. Okay. I it off. Thank you. Guys, Thank you guys. Cracking me up Appreciate today. it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Old I'm business so item number four. I know, I know. Like, let's get on with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we, you know, appreciate the, the really, really good engagement from the residents. Um, all right. Old but business item number four, dangerous intersection of Fenimore, Prospect, and Monroe. That, again, is our walking safety assessment that we most recently conducted. The report is underway. We can leave it on just to okay. keep ourselves honest, you know, in terms of yep. tracking. Um, but no new news there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> old business item number five, Mamaroneck Avenue pedestrian traffic improvements. And we have here phase one funding. So according to Dan's update, um, this is, I believe, the curve of Mamaroneck Avenue, sort of where the intersection of Old White Plains Road comes in, right? If you're going right. to enter Washingtonville, right? Um, oh, towards Mamar uh, White Plains, right. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, we know that the village has put in for and been approved for a community development block grant, and I'm going to sneeze, apologize. <laughs> Pardon me. That, that, <laughs> that means it's true. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, the they ain't got the money yet. Is right. the bottom line. <laughs> yeah. So you know. Well, we could... they they said they said the next four years. So twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. We're not there yet. Uh, the up, up over the next, next several year, years, right? Yeah. Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. So. But right. in any case, there's nothing for us to do there, and it should be stricken from the. I the, I think that again, you're right, take David. Take it off. Take it off. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Good. 
<laughs> I see, I see Elena, Lucia's goals wide and clear here. <laughs> Ela, Elena, Elena is going to be very happy because every time you oh, you guys don't take anything off the agendas. I'm like, yeah, I know. We're oh, I'll put that. I'll put that on our thank you card. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 not not Alana, Elena. Elena Porreta. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. you're absolutely right. Okay, we got okay. that. Okay. Um, Six. Next item number six, Southbury Ave and Guion Drive stop sign. And there was a, uh, there was discussion of putting the speed trailer there for a little bit, which I know that yeah, speed trailer gets putting a lot of use. Putting it back. Right. Yeah. So um, that okay. was uh, from last month with um, Lieutenant uh, DeRosa. Now I think, right. didn't she get promoted? Temporary now, chief. Now yeah. almost chief. That's right. Temporary That's chief. Right. Yeah, so so that's what it was. They were supposed they were supposed to put it back. She was going to ask the chief to put it back. So maybe the the officer that's with us tonight does he have any info for us? You know, I've noticed that the officer who's on with us tonight is an attendee and not a panelist. So I think he called in as opposed to joining as a panelist. So Jason, if you're listening, um, can we allow him to speak? I think he can. He's not muted. Okay. Um, he's, he's enabled to talk, um, officer Nodolsky, can you hear us? I hear you. Okay. Hey. okay. What do you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's your speed trailer these days? <laughs> oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, the last time I remember the one was at the Harbor and the other one was in Orienta somewhere. I don't, I'm not quite sure of where they've been. I haven't been back to, I was training for a couple weeks, so I haven't really been here, um, except a little bit of last week and this week. Um, I think there's and that's why the, the, the traffic guys are really inept with that. I don't really know much about them. I believe I saw one by the high school. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I know just, you know, both from the, you know, relocatable message signs, as well as, you know, those that are permanent across the throughways and stuff like that, that there's competing priorities, right? Because a lot of them are being used for COVID related messaging. Um, but I wonder, officer, if you wouldn't mind just sort of relaying back to uh, acting chief DeRuza or, or, you know, whoever is acting now in charge of traffic, um, that you know this this request for the the relocatable speed sign to be put onto the corner of Southbury and Guion, um, you know, for just a bit more data collection. I think that would be valuable. Actually, Shannon, it was there, and then they took it away because the school started. And then last month, the officer that was on that the lieutenant that night uh, emailed off uh, 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 Lieutenant DeRosa. And they said mm -hmm. that they were gonna. She was gonna ask the chief to put it back on. So right. that, that's where that's where we were for last. Yeah. Week. Well, we were so, gonna put it back, Lucia, without right. the right uh, without number the indicators. Right. right. Without the lights. Because we had it there for a month with the uh, speed. Right. The lights. The lights. So right. we were gonna put it back for a month without the lights. You guys. Right. 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 So yep. so that's what that's that's where we stand. We needed to go back without the lights, you know, turned on, so that to collect the data. Yep. Collect the data. You want me to call her and ask ask the lieutenant if she could please right. when when there's time to do that yeah. put, bring it back to Southbury. That would be good. I can I, I'm happy to call her back. She's Thank very you, helpful. Karen. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Love the volunteer spirit tonight. Woohoo. <laughs> All right. Guess what, gang? We're down to our last item of old business. Um, now, this is Orienta Avenue, a four-way stop, and it says requesting crash data, which is usually a Dan. Let me open up his email. Uh, right. So, Orienta Avenue, four-way stop. I'm afraid I don't remember which intersection of Orienta this was, but... That was bleaker in Orienta, I believe. Okay. That's great. Oh, which is down further, close to the water, right? Um, and I, I believe that uh, Dan was going to, again, uh, look to the PD to get yeah. the crash data on that Still uh, not. To, right. to share back with the commission. Yeah, there okay. are two stop signs there already, one on Grecian Point and one on Bleecker. Somebody, I think, was looking to put a stop sign on Orienta Avenue. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
All right, so we'll just wait for Dan, right? Okay. Can I, may I ask a question real quickly? If anyone knows the answer to this, it would be helpful. Over uh, in uh, Shore Acres by the Mamernick Beach and Yacht Club, there's a lot of orange barrels there over that little bridge over the um, Otter Creek. Does anyone know what's going on possibly over there? Did you guys see anything or hear of anything? I don't know. Okay. Is it, yeah, I mean, potential construction related to the bridge or? I was thinking so as well, but they didn't do anything. It's just, I see a lot of stuff going on and I thought maybe you guys, I just took a shot in the dark. Okay. Maybe storage of orange barrels. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe. I okay. have one question about a, uh, I think we got something from Dan about the state was going to put a no right on red uh, sign on the post road at Fenimore in lieu of, because they couldn't adjust the traffic light pattern, right? Mm -hmm. We got something, an email on that, but we never, it was never brought to us because I guess because it is the post road. Boy. Yeah, I, I didn't get a copy of that, Larry. Um, I'm I, afraid. I mean, I, yeah, I got that, that they wanted to put a no right turn on red sign on the post road at Fenimore to kind of alleviate. It goes back to an old business with yep. from last year yep. where, you know, crossing the post road. And I, I thought we should be involved with that, too, because I don't 100 percent agree with that. No, I remember I discussing this. I remember discussing this last month and the month before, at least. And I thought the issue was whether the sign should be on Fenimore, saying "no right turn on to Post Road from Fenimore" because Correct. of the pedestrian crossing there. If it's going to be Fenimore, it should be. Oh, we did discuss. It, it should be yeah. no left turn. Well, no right turn. You, okay. It depends where you want people to cross. You want them crossing on the south side of the intersection or the north side. If they cross on the south side, on the north side of the intersection, they have the cars turning right off the post road to go up Fenimore Road. Right. That's the conflict there. Here's but if you have people crossing on the south side, <clears throat> then there's no conflict with cars turning right on red. You get here's, me? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing that, you know, just is boggling my mind. And and right now I know that our Region 8 NISDOT office, you know, out of Poughkeepsie that, you know, has jurisdiction over this stretch of the post road um, is, is they just lost their traffic engineer. So there's a guy in that seat who's acting and he's not, you know, classically trained in the art. So is trying to sort of, you know, drink through the fire hose to learn. But what I, I continue to be completely confused by is that, you know, the intersection of Boston Post Road and Rushmore, or I'm sorry, and uh, Rich Bell, right, has an all pedestrian walk signal. The intersection of Boston Post Road and Mamaroneck Avenue has an all pedestrian walk signal. Why is it impossible for the intersection of the Boston Post Road and Fenimore to have an all pedestrian walk signal. I just don't see the logic. Um, you, you know, know what? A, a NAMI was was in contact with the state over that, remember? Last right. year? Yes, you and know, they, guys, they, if you- They, if, they, they if, couldn't if, do it. For some right, reason, if, they couldn't do it. If you guys look at your agenda that Elena sent over tonight, if you look under on, on the second page under other, where it says Grint Rimis, the crosswalk. Yeah, that was the yep. That's right. the yep. one. So, so yes, it, it could not be done through the state, they're saying. So now we suggested maybe, you know, putting a no turn on red on the on the post, uh, you know, to stop all the From traffic. From Fanamore to post, right? Right, right. So that's what we're still waiting we on. Never, that's, that's we what... never discussed putting a sign like that. No. Somebody else must have come up with that. I think the state no. wanted to mention that to Dan mm -hmm. as an alternative to adjusting the traffic. Right, right. no right. no turn on red to be posted. That's what right. they want because they cannot they cannot uh, sync all four lights which I uh, which makes no sense because like Shannon's saying all the other um yeah. uh, Areas. Much more complicated intersections offer this. Exactly. Much more complicated. Exactly. This is a T junction, exactly. you know. Right. <laughs> like, come right. on. Right. So I mean, this so is I, one, this I'll, is, this has been on here forever. Yep. 
and and I can you know at least sort of you know wearing my traffic commissioner hat, not my day hat. I can follow up with you know the Region Eight office of NISDOT and find out you know listen you know because I a lot of times right it's just a matter of like getting into the right communication channels right um, you know like someone who randomly picked up the phone one day when Dan Sarnoff called might have said you know like oh that that traffic signal is 18 years old there's no way we're touching it you know come on <laughs> it's oh, like, actually when they repaved uh, and they laid the pipes down Fenimore Road last year mm -hmm. the new sewer lines and yep. everything uh they repaved it and they put new lights up at that yep. intersection yep it was a Absolutely. brand new uninstalled traffic so center. there should be no issue yeah. there should be no issue okay shannon who are you going to follow up with with uh new york state dot region eight new york state d o t region what, what was it DOT? region eight yeah oh, region. so region eight covers uh westchester rockland okay perfect yeah. Yeah, I only perfect. brought that up, Shannon, because I, I think that no right turn on red 24-7 is unnecessary there. Yeah. And that's I, not the solution I agree. anyway. I yeah. agree. That's okay. not a, it's not going to be enforced either. So, you know. <laughs> and then I just have an uh, update on all the follow-ups. Uh, there is no updates. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, uh, Elena said that Jerry has not gotten back to her, so we'll yeah. we'll just wait on it. You know, he's been overwhelmed. I'll, I'll send her. I'll send her another. I'll send him another email next week. Awesome. Thank you. That's all I. Um, the only other thing. All right. No, we took care of that new business. Forget it. West uh, West Boston Post Road, right? That mirror. Yep. Okay, yep. that's cool. All right. Yep. You are going to email the resident. Okay. Perfect. Absolutely. That's all. Anything else for the good of the order, gang? Yes, we need to. I move we approve the minutes from September. We need to oh, approve two you. minutes. Both Thank of them. you. Yes, both. We didn't have a quorum. David, I mean, Larry, stay on. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> don't go anywhere yet. Hey, don't forget Alana left before me last time. <laughs> no, Karen got cut off. I that's did. Right. I lost that's my right. power. That's we right. lost Karen. That's what it was. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I just did. Thank you, David. I'll the, second minutes, that. the minutes for when? For which? For September, I move we September October. For September and October as distributed in the agenda. And I second it. And uh, Karen. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Oops, I don't vote. I'm sorry. Don't count me. Nope. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> No, I think, listen, you know, I, I, I really am serious. I want to send a nice thank you card to Alana because she was just such a powerful voice on our traffic commission. But, but I also want to say, you know, two vacancies on this team is pretty uh, exciting um, and, you know, not a little bit, you know, a wonderful opportunity. And <laughs> I'm thinking in particular about, you know, engaging some of our, you know, up and coming residents. Um, we talk all the time about, you know, Mamaroneck is losing its younger adults, right? You know, the generations deep folks that grow up here, the kids move away. Ugh. Like, how do we engage them? How do we get them more involved in their community? So I certainly have some ideas about, you know, reaching out to uh, the younger folks, you know, in the broader parts of the village. Um, but if y'all have any notions of, um, you know, people who would, really, really benefit from the volunteer opportunity, but also, you know, want to meaningfully support and get engaged in their community, by all means, you know, like throw Kelly your ideas, right? Absolutely. And hey, Shannon, how did the um, the fair go, the Zoom fair? So nobody showed up. Jason okay. was my moderator for that as well. Okay. It's not you, Jason, I promise. I hope not. <laughs> No one showed up. No, okay. yeah. but we were there. <laughs> we had four people register and we stayed on for a good 20 minutes and okay. no shows, no shows. <clears throat> right. But Chef, Kelly, you think, Kelly, you think you can um, talk to Sally to see if she can, you know, uh, try to throw it out there to. For yeah, we've, we've been putting it up. We've been putting it in the weekly email blast and putting it on the website that, oh, you know, okay. yeah. Cause That's all the good. committees are looking for people, right? Because yep. December is the big, terms expire so yeah it's all out there okay perfect great cool. okay yep. all right well thank you all very much do we have a motion to adjourn i'll motion thank you Lizzie. i'll second 
All right, David, appreciate it. Who, who second? I did. Larry. Oh, that was Larry. Oh, Larry. <laughs> okay. All right. My buddy. Dear, dearest friends, please have a wonderful, safe Thanksgiving. Bye. Stay well. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Bye. You too, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.